Our next speaker today is Mark Sebastian, who is a former mark maker on the Amex and on the CBOE and is the founder of the Option Pit, a popular full service options mentoring and consulting firm specializing in educating traders at all levels. Now, Mark is our options expert today, and let's get going with his first question, which is, with the recent spike in volatility, how does the VIX and interest rates affect options? Mark, the floor is now yours. Well, you know, uh, that's an easy one. Um, a very simple, simple understanding with VIX is that VIX is actually a measure of the cost of options. You know, one, um, this, uh, one of the things that you have to think about when you look at VIX itself, is a chart of VIX is really a chart of how expensive it is to hedge and how expensive it is to own, own option premium. So we're now in a protracted volatility spike. Uh, this is the longest period of time the VIX has been this high since 2011. Uh, if you recall back in 2011, the VIX spiked to about 48 and then hung around uh, into the 20s and 30s for, you know, all the way through to December. We're in a very similar time period right now. Um, we have, we saw the VIX spike to 53 on August 25th. So we see here, this is a, this is a chart of live vol execution. Let me pull this up. And, uh, you know, closed at 40, but got as high as 53.29. Now, since then, volatility eased off a little bit but has now since kind of been finding a, a, a range to bounce in. And you're saying, well, that's great. That, that must mean that it's so, it's really easy to sell options and you know, this is the last chance that I wanna buy uh, any type of option premium. Well, it's, it sounds great, except for there's a problem. With a high VIX, you get high market movement. So here's a, uh, the S&P over the last three months. And then let's take a look at uh, two indicators. This is his 10 day historical volatility and 20 day historical volatility. And then this red line is 30 day implied volatility. So this is kind of like live vols version of the VIX. And what do you notice is that those periods where, you know, let's take a look at this spike here. All right, highest VIX level, Highest spike level since 2011, all right? The VIX absolutely exploded, hit its highest level really since 2008. So um, seven year high, but as high as volatility gets, look at the movement, the 10 day movement. 10 day movement actually gets higher than where volatility goes. So there's an old saying, um, we've all heard the saying, buy low and sell high in options, it's, it's not the same. So you, with stocks, you buy low and sell high. With option premiums, you buy high and sell higher, and you sell low and buy lower. So your goal is actually to try and catch compression when you're trading options. So those of you spec using them for like directional speculation, all right, it has been very difficult to be a seller or a buyer because of market volatility. Now, now that we are in an area where I think the VIX has found a range, it's, I, I think it's going to meander higher. Uh, I think that we're going to see the market test kind of the October 2014 lows in October. But I don't think we're going to see any of this crazy action that, that we see in kind of this time period. There we go. I don't think you're going to see anything like that. Um, but I think that you're going to see VIX kind of stay in, in a range. I'm looking at kind of this time period and kind of this time period you know people pay attention to these things called death crosses and with vix the kind of vix death cross is not that important what is important is that it's found a near-term kind of mean 
All right, we all know about this. There's this concept that volatility mean reverts. And we're now in a, a period where it's me mean, it's mean is going to be around 23 24 not the 14 15 you're used to so um, you know how does this affect options well if you have a option buying program that when you saw some signal trigger it tells you that you know I should buy calls or I should buy puts it is going to work a lot worse because option premiums are so much more expensive. On the flip side, if you've got a program that says, oh, option, I should sell options here or there, it may work better. Now, here's the one caveat. When the VIX is extremely high, all of those programs that people use, all the tracking, all the, the uh, you know, the candlesticks and and uh, Fibonacci's and oh you name it all right all, all the Bollinger Bands and these people look at uh, all that kind of goes out the window because the market is not logical all right now what I am going to do is teach you an indicator on when it is safe I'm going to show you an indicator that can tell you when it's safe to turn your indicators back, back on I do not want Windows 10. Leave me alone. All right, so what we're about to look at is what's called VIX futures term structure. And the really important thing to be aware of is the relationship between here. These guys. While we're in a situation where the October future is trading at a premium to the November future, and the November future is trading at a premium with December, and December is pretty flat with January. All of those models go out the window and they basically stop working. So, um, you know, VIX itself, not my most important indicator, but those VIX futures are, are a really huge indicator. And just be aware that with a higher VIX, the premiums that you're collecting uh, are much higher, but the you know, you're in a lot more traffic. You know, think about it like in a video game. When you reach a higher level, you can score a lot more points, but it's also a lot easier to die. And um, that's kind of the way VIX is is kind of dictating the market right now. Does that make sense? Any, any questions on that? The next question there, there are several that we were given to you, but the next one is, what's the best weekly option strategy for a new trader? What's the best weekly option strategy for a new trader? Um, don't trade weekly options. <laughs> no, um, you know, one of the things about weekly options is that um, there's this strange balance between decay and gamma, which is kind of sensitivity to, um, sensitivity to underlying price movement. So, you know, the first mistake I think a lot of new traders make is that they trade weekly options the week of expiration. If you are a newer trader, um, you know, I'll pull up in a name like, uh, oh, we can look at Apple. All right, and we'll just look at some, some different strikes here. Look at all, all these different months that we have in mind. We've got the ones expiring tomorrow, the ones expiring on the 9th, and the ones expiring on the 16th. And what I would encourage people to do is to trade in the second and third week option if you're learning about weeklies. And when we and at the latest, get out of your position by the Wednesday prior to options expiration and preferably the Friday before. All right. The one thing that you have to understand, I'm gonna pull up like a little a little PowerPoint slide here. So a lot of people are used to, uh, they think option time decay is like this, all right? And this is um, the way time decay looks for at the money options. Well, the big issue is that at the money options are only, you know, the closer we get to expiration, there are fewer and fewer and fewer at actual at the money options. So 
at the monies decay exponentially. The further you go away from out of the money, from at the money, the more linear the decay becomes. So you notice how at 20 days to expiration, there's a linear decay for that at the money option. But at 20 days to expiration, an out of the money option meets kind of around, you know, is pretty flat. So the other issue is that there then gets to this point where options are very, very cheap. Okay. And at a certain point, they actually stop decaying. So I want to take, show you this. This is kind of what the real decay of the life of an out-of-the-money option looks like. So it's losing money. It has a period of exponential decay. Then that decay basically stops. And then the final day of expiration, it starts to decay again. All right. And just to prove a point, uh, this is an old screenshot of GM. I want you to take a, a look at uh, kind of how that decay can move. With two days to expiration and 20 days to, 22 days to expiration, the at the money, there's this, we, this exponential, right? In 22 days to expiration, I can make 95 cents, or in two days to expiration, I can make 30 cents. Well, obviously, I'm going to collect a lot more in those two days at that at the money. Now, here's the key for out of the money options. The, the April 37s, which are a couple of bucks out of the money at this point, are worth 14 cents with nine days to expire. And the May 37s are worth 51 cents with 22 days to expire. Well, just rough math, nine goes into 22 about two and a half times. And rough math, two and a half times 14 cents is 35 cents not 51. I can actually collect more money on out of the money trades by moving further away. So unless your plan is to trade kind of at right at the money, for new and budding traders, take a look at really that are wanting to trade out of the money call spreads or credit spreads and out of the money put spreads. Take a look at moving three or four weeks back you might actually make more money and then cover when the option gets cheap enough. So instead of selling this option at 14 cents, sell this option at 51 cents and buy it when it gets to 14 and then roll back, you'll actually end up making a lot more dollars on that one. All right. And, and that's really how I would approach um, trading this stuff. Okay. So when I say that the approach to um, trading weekly options is not to, it's because most new traders want to trade further away and want to trade kind of out of the money. So if that's really your intent, to sell premium kind of out of the money through put spreads and call spreads, then don't trade weekly options. Trade the regular monthly, trade a little further back. Okay. All right, that's great, Mark. The next question that came in, and I think you're 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 starting to address some of these, you know, as you go through. But let me put it out there anyway. Was how do you manage risk when you trade options? All right. So you ever seen? Uh, uh, you ever seen Glenn? Uh, oh, well, I can't. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, or whatever it's called. You know what Alec Baldwin always says? What does Alec Baldwin say, folks? says A, B, C, always be closing, all right? So if you're not closing trades, you're losing. Um, and the first lesson for managing risk it leads to, you know, understanding that time decay function, all right? Moving back to this time decay function, all right? It's a great idea if you are an option premium seller to be short options here. There are a lot of people that don't want to pay commissions, and so they don't cover this part of the decay. And it is silliness.
Because on top of the fact that you could make more money rolling backwards, um, the you you are strapping on very little little a lot of risk for very little reward. So the way you think about this is, if you are unwilling to buy an option back for a nickel, that is the equivalent of selling that option at a nickel. Something you should never do. All right, now two, and this is the other big mistake traders make when you are making adjustments or you're managing a position. Do things, do trades that reduce margin, not trades that increase margin. I've seen more people um, that have lost money on adjusting trades than I've seen people actually lose on the trade themselves. It's amazing. So the way I kind of look at things is one has to put a hard maximum loss on every trade. How much are you willing to lose? All right. And then on your winners, always be closing. Take money off the table. All right. And then finally, and this is most important, just because you lost money doesn't mean you made a bad trade. And just because you made money doesn't mean you made a good trade. Go through the process of evaluating your trades and figure out was this a was there edge in this trade was it theoretically a good trade and on your winners was there something I could have done better and the answer is probably a lot of times yes just because you made money doesn't mean it was a good trade always remember that all right Riley any any more yeah. I'm okay. Sorry that, so, uh, I'm to keep you yeah, no problem whatsoever there, uh, Mark. Uh, the next question we had, I think you've pretty much covered this, but I'll put it out there anyway because I think it's something that you want to to reinforce. But it, we had several people write in, basically asking the question: So, exactly what do I need to know about time decay? So, beyond what you've already shared with us, do you have any other mm -hmm. things that you'd like to reinforce, Mark? About time decay. Well, yeah, um, you know, underst one, understand all how each option has its own decay. And understand that volatility can actually make time stop. Okay? And I'm going to show you this in, uh, in, in kind of a cool fashion. So let's look at Apple options. Oh, we're already on Apple. All right, and I'm going to pull up a chart. Oh, let's look at, oh, like October. We'll look at October options. All right, and we'll look at the October 112 puts. And I want to show you this for a very specific reason. All right, now what you're looking at is the value of an option. Well, you know what, I'm going to pull it up on a, on a different chart, actually, as I look at it. And this is going to be eye-opening in terms of what volatility can do to a position. So I'm going to pull up a chart. Go to three months. And let's just find a period where Apple was kind of having a rough stretch. You know, it went through a rough stretch prior to um, prior to the big, huge sell-off. We'll look at oh. Five, fifteen. Oh, let me find a decent period here. Um, and this should make my point. All right, here we go. All right. Close. I just want to find the right closing price for us. All right, here we go. 
So here we see a close of about 113. All right. I'm going to pull up a chart of volatility. About 113. And here we see a uh, close of 112.65. And what I want to point out here is let's take a look at where volatility is in relative terms. And this is the one I was looking for. So implied volatility is high. And we all know that time decay works in our favor, right? So as time passes, I'm going to make more and more money on my trade. Well, so what we'll do is we'll look at a simple, the September 1, 10 puts. Okay. And on August 20th, <coughs> we've already had a rough day. Apple closes 11265. We're at about 236. Uh, you know, it's down 236, volatility is around 30. And the price is $2.70. Well, let's just move things around. You know, obviously, we have a couple of, of rough days here. But here we are, a week has passed. And my 110 puts. With the stock actually slightly higher than where it was a few days ago, are still worth the same. So my stock is 30 cents higher. It's been an entire week. And I've collected zero decay. And why? It's because volatility is four points higher. So volatility can actually make time stop. So if you are just unilaterally selling premium without taking volatility into consideration, you are throwing away money. All right. I think uh, that, that'd be my final point there. We're going to get to unched on the day. It looks like it, huh? Uh, all right. I think we have what? Any, any more questions? Mark, Mark. Wrap it up. Yeah. Mark. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah, Raleigh, Raleigh had to reboot his uh, computer. I have one more question for you. And sure. that is, what, what are the top options you are currently following and why? Uh, I'm trading a lot of VIX and VXX. Um, VXX is interesting. Most people are used to it paying out this, this crazy decay. Like if you look at a long-term chart of VXX, all right, this is a stock that over a long period of time, all right, so this looks crazy, right? You're going, oh my gosh, look at the way that thing exploded. Look at the way that chart exploded. But now, if I pull back a two-year chart, it looks like almost nothing. So what's going on now is that VXX actually has a decay to its back. Every day it makes a little money as long as VIX futures are backward, which means obviously that, you know, as I stated earlier, that October is trading at a premium to November and so on. So this is one that I'm watching closely to see if the futures curve flattens, because that will be really mean an opportunity for me to come in short. And then in the near term, I'm using VXX as a hedge against a bunch of my trades. Now, the other, the other stuff I really like is IBB and Amgen. For trades, um, I think the biotech index got completely just murdered, uh, unjustifiably. So I, I'm looking for it to make a some sort of comeback. And if we look at the implied volatility of the options, now that I think that it's kind of done getting completely and utterly destroyed, um, I think this sets up as a really interesting put spread. Um, I also might like it as a bear. Uh, one by two, uh, or a bear ratio spread. Um, if you want something a little more liquid than IBB, I might look at Amgen, which is the the you know the blue the blue chip of biotechs. 
So a trait I might look at in Amgen. Here, let's just throw one on. And I'm just going to do this small. So I would look at probably like um, October, a couple of weeks back. And the trade I would probably look to, let's see what I can get out of. See, if I buy the 135s and I sell the 131s, so 135s are 280. The 131s twice, I get a buck 70. So I collect 60 cents. And then against it, I might do the 123s. The other thing I might do is a 1 by 3 by 2. So if I buy one of the 135s and sell three of the 30s, and then buy two of the 125s, what, is that, what does that cost me? If I could do that for, for a credit, I would do it. Yep, that's not bad. So the way I would probably do this trade, obviously, don't just do this trade because I am. I know what I'm doing. All right, that's filled. And then I'll sell. Come on. Put that sucker anymore. Oh, so I leg this in pieces, typically. Let's see what we got here. I'll go 152. I sell one of these. Probably get filled there. And I'll buy two of these for 80. That'll fill. Nope. They're making me work for that one. We'll pay 82 just so that I can get this on the books. Bastards. Took you long enough. Now the good news is that the two I'm selling up here will be a lot more. I'm not super price sensitive as long as I'm getting a credit for it. All right, there you go. This will fill in a second, folks. So a trade like this would be something I would do. And now if you want to see kind of what my risk looks like, um, what I've done is I've uh, you know, I've got something that, you know, gets bearish with time and is short a lot of volatility. And, and hopefully I'll end up with like a free put. So let's just see what this looks like on the 12th. And you can see how this thing plays. And then if I drop volatility, like this is kind of what I'm going for here, folks. Amgen to maybe ease a little lower or uh, and I make some money over the next couple of weeks or I just keep the credit. Very simple trade. So that's a trade I'm looking at in biotechs. Uh, also, I trade a ton of VIX. All right. Any other questions? Hi, Mark. Okay, folks, we've got uh, hey. just a, about a minute and a half left here. Uh, any other questions for Mark? Nice job, by the way, Mark. And once again, thanks for fighting through some of those technology issues because I know as you get ready for a presentation, they can kind of knock you off your game. But I think it takes a lot to knock you off your game. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so I'll just show the uh, my uh, offer. Um, you know, back in April, we did a mastering weekly options course because there were so many weekly questions. Um, I, I figured, hey, why don't I pull the recordings up and make a special offer for you guys? And um, we sold it at two forty seven, and we actually sold it to most people between one hundred forty seven and one ninety seven. But because I love the Trading Pub people and their audience, we'll take an extra 100 bucks off. Use code TPUB, and um, you can see the, uh, it's, so it's just 47 bucks. It's a four-hour class. So what does that work out to? About 12 bucks an hour? Um, I pay my lawnmower guy more than that. I'm just saying. Um, and so if, you know, in that four-hour period, you're going to learn a lot about Understanding decay, how to integrate implied volatility to weekly trading, proven methods that we use to create income, directional trading, butterfly and calendar spreads, plus risk management. So it'll cover just about everything that you guys were asking about today, and it's uh, $47. So it's not, uh, 
not like I'm asking it to, to crush your wallet that much. Well, I tell you what, that's terrific, Mark. Thank you so much for your time today. And, folks, what an awesome offer he's putting out here. Let me ask you a quick question, Mark. Is this, uh, is this something that would also be good for somebody that's just new to options, or is it for somebody that's got some experience? How, how would you position this offer? I would, I would say it is not someone that's brand spanking new, um, but we, we, the way we usually build biggies is as a crescendo. So it starts out very, very... Uh, relatively beginnerish and then moves into more and more advanced so um, you know the, those first three target uh, those first three points I think are really good for someone who's just starting to look at weekly options uh, someone who's let's say beginner a beginner but not a complete novice uh, and then by the end you're going to be looking at stuff that that uh, you know anyone just below my level would learn something from Oh, that's great. Well, once again, Mark, thank you so much for your time today and that great uh, presentation.